Hey everybody, this is Eric. And today I wanna to share with you a process that I used on a real project where I took one larger model and split it up into pieces so that I could collaborate with a colleague. So maybe you found yourself in a similar situation as myself, whether the model is getting too big and you need to break it up into pieces so that you can work on individual things at one time, uh, one component or piece at a time, or in this case, actually, you have a tight time frame and you have one person with a specialized skill set, let's say architecture, and somebody else like myself in landscape working on two completely different parts of the same model. So this is the process and not just the how to do it, but also just some of the rationale behind why we did what we did. And I think you're going to find this useful. So let's just get right to it. So I've got this model. You maybe have seen it before. We actually used this back a few years ago for a SketchUp product model. So when you launch SketchUp, you know, you see a little cool graphic. Um, anyway, this will make a good demo, the story behind it as well. So I started out with uh, this idea of me basically taking what I normally like to do, which is landscapes and sites. And we kind of built a story about a little cabin in the woods. So we needed somebody to design a really cool contemporary cabin. And so this is kind of the starting point where we had these the, uh, this is a person who has an architecture background on the team at the time, said, well, why don't we take these two overlapping boxes, almost like shipping containers, and see what that does. So I placed it on the slope. It was important that before he gets too far into the design that we figured out the context of where the cabin would sit. Of course, when we look at that, it's sort of like, well, there's a big cantilever or there's going to be a lot of cut and fill. So even just looking at an early massing model, we made the decision that I think it would work better if we took one of the volumes and sunk it down so that it's sort of embedded in the slope, almost like um, it's it's coming out of it. So they're they're contrasting shapes. But anyway, sort of a different story from a design perspective. I say that because this was important as our starting point. Once we had this shape here, this sort of massing shape built into the slope, we could then make it a component. In this case, I've already made it a component. But as a component, unlike a group, I can then choose to save as. So I'm going to save this component separately from my, this SketchUp model that I'm working in. So when I say save as, I go to my desktop, I'm gonna call this buildings, give it a name or something like that. If I have a different version of it, I can do that. And then now what it's done is it's extracted it, but it's rem it remembers its position. So it kind of remembers it's where it is in position to the world. So in this case, what I've got is I've got this component, I've saved out just those two overlapping massing shapes and I'm ready to begin the design process. Now I've got it in a separate file here and I'll show you that this was kind of just a just kind of the fun part of, of the iterative process that we get, you know, that the architect uh, or the architecture team gets to kind of play with and say, okay, well, how do we sort of evolve those two sugar cubes? Where do the decks go? How do you get from one to the other? How do we give the walls a thickness rather than just leaving them, you know, just a single plane? What are structural? What's glazing? You know, and so you get the idea. Basically, it gives us um, all the way till we have something in a shell like this. So now I, I've broken this apart just for this little lesson here so I can show you that this iterative process builds up. But, you know, essentially that would happen all sort of in this single file. So now I can go ahead and I'm still working on the landscape. I'm placing rocks and I'm sort of sculpting the terrain and I'm kind of adding the entourage and figuring out camera views and all kinds of things like that. And then somebody else at the same time can sit there and do that iterative process that I just discussed, basically turning these sugar cubes into a finished model. So let me go ahead and find that. I've got all the sort of component pieces that sort of made up this little contemporary cabin in the woods. And then when we kind of combine them all together, let me just hide that temporary, that placeholder one. And you can see all those elements that you see here that made up our final cabin design. So with that kind of temporary stuff turned off, I've got my finished cabin. I didn't move anything. Remember, it was really important that whoever's working on this kind of retains that position in space. And I'll show you why right now. I'm going to go ahead and when I'm done working on it or I'm ready to send it back to the main model, I just hit save. So now it's good. It's ready to be checked against the landscape model. So now my overall model or, or my render model or my landscape model, whatever, wherever this sort of separate piece is going, here it still is. Now I get to come over here and choose reload. So when I reload, it's going to ask me, where do I want to reload from? I'm going to grab that file from my desktop, the one that's been not the sugar cube file, the first one, but the one that's been iterative. Um, 
it's been designed within and there it is so you can see what happened is it pretty much just replaced when i reloaded it it replaced that sugar cube placeholder with the final design and you can do this as many times as you want as long as you have as long as somebody is kind of the keeper of the final drawing so they know what stage each drawing is in you could come back and continue to make you can do another version of this do save as call it concept 2 as long as you maintain the relative position of this component as it was saved from the master model then you can reload as many variations as you want so for example just to give you if i make some changes here for some reason somebody says i don't like that color uh, let's take materials tools remove some selection maybe make that sort of like a green roof okay what would that look like i'm going to do that one more time i'm going to save that i just want to kind of show you how quick and easy it is to keep working in a separate model and then come over here and remember this model is just for sort of capturing views and it's just for landscape so we're not going to do any architecture work in this model i'm just going to reload that one more time it says that it's been edited yes i'm going to go ahead and browse to it again if it's asked me to and there it is you can see it picked up that second change that green roof is now in there so just remember that if you go into this component and you start making changes in this actual component like if i didn't like that green roof and i wanted to change the color back to something to gray or something just keep in mind that that's where the communication breakdown needs to be careful because now all of a sudden the component that's in the model is going to just override that link that has that it has currently to the other model so there's nothing that says hey somebody's come in and made a change to that original model so you just have to make sure that you're communicating with your design team and that everybody knows sort of who's the last person to touch it or who's sort of the project manager or who is um you know sort of tasked with making sure that everything has been reloaded and is up to date and knows who and when things are being changed so that was a pretty quick example obviously you can sort of extrapolate on this and you can break a model up i've worked on one where it was uh over 45 million polygons and it was seven or eight districts of a giant resort master plan and so this idea each district i would give to a different team member and so it was really cool because then one person was the keeper of sort of the main model and then everybody just got to focus on their little sub models so this example i just gave you with this cabin and the train it's a pretty simplistic example um, but the nice thing about it is that it lets two people be working side by side because we started with that sugar cube we knew where it was going to be placed and so we don't have to go in and copy paste rotate place every single time we want to do an iteration or an update all you do is click reload you know it's going to hit it's going to land exactly where it needs to so follow this process if you're working uh, with a teammate and just make sure like anything good communication goes a long way so i'm going to stop there i'm going to say thank you all as always for watching we appreciate you appreciate your time if you have any thoughts on this if you've tried this process if you've got any ideas about some other questions that you have uh, feel free to shoot them in the comments and i'll check those and i'll get them back to you i'll get a reply back to you as soon as i can so don't forget to share subscribe and give us you know that big old thumbs up while you're at it while you're commenting and we will be sure to keep pushing out this great content for you every single week so thanks i'll leave you there see you next time